What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself, where we change lives through volleyball, training, and inspirational content. Welcome to my volleyball coach reaction to High Q Season 2, Episode 12. If you're new to this channel, I'm a volleyball coach, volleyball player, and personal trainer who provides volleyball tutorials, jump training workouts, and other cool volleyball videos. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more content. To my female fans, thank you for providing your perspective on the girl fanboy scenes. As a male, I try not to assume how a female perceives things and always tries to learn things from their perspective. I know that female characters are often over-sexualized in anime, which can get very annoying. So I'm glad that Haikyuu does not give in to fan service. I'm looking forward to watching Fukurodani play more. It's fascinating when teams know how to compensate for each other's teammates. This reminds me of one of my favorite professional men's volleyball club teams, Zenit Kazan, when they had Matt Anderson, Wilfredo Leon, and Maxi Mikhailov. All three players had the ability to carry the team, but neither of them acted like they needed the ball or that they were superstars, even though they actually were. When one player did really well and got majority of the kills, the other players celebrated just as hard. When one player was struggling, the others would step up, and they ended up winning almost every major competition over several years. Thanks for clarifying that Okawa was actually not in the top 5. I do like that Haikyuu included a setter as an ace for a team, and not just all hitters. I like how Tsuki's older brother still remembers those amazing volleyball experiences as a middle school player when he was an ace for his team, and continues to play after high school. Sometimes volleyball players will tell me that they're sad after their high school or college season ends because they think that's the end of their volleyball career. But it only gets better after high school or college. There are so many great adult volleyball competitions like tournaments, leagues, semi-professional, and professional volleyball team opportunities. You just have to find those opportunities on your own, which is exciting because you get to build your own experience. If you've been enjoying my videos, please consider supporting me on my Patreon, where you receive exclusive access to my monthly live Q&A sessions, podcasts, my private blog, behind the scenes footage, and more. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and click that notification bell so you never miss a video. Now let's get this high Q party started. The National High School Tournament is already here. Ooh, there's the Vabuchan character. Tebaichi, another team we get to learn about. Karasuno? Mm. The country bumpkins almost beat Seijo. Yeah, I love this volleyball gossip. Oh, that's right. Daichi's a good receiver. Tsuki's looking extra muscular today. Yeah, these guys have that determined look. And <laughs> most importantly, <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> oh no, is he nervous again? Oh. Yamaguchi looks like he's about to vomit too. <laughs> uh oh, even Asahi is getting a little nervous. 
<laughs> of course, Uncle Tanaka is so proud of him not puking in his own lap. Hmm. Karasuna versus Tebaiji. ギミナミ。ギミナミ。ギミナミ。ギミナミ。ギミナミ。ギミナミ。ギミナミ。ギミナミ。ギミナミ。ギミナミ。ギミナミ。ギミナミ。ギミナミ。ギミナミ。ギ
<laughs> Why is he being so peaceful? Nice gear. <laughs> ha, this is how you know Ogi, Ogi Minami is not a very strong team. If they're intimidated by the hitting lines warm up, then they've already lost the game in their head. I feel like the animation is even sharper during this episode. Maybe they save their best animators for the the playing episodes. It's like extra detail in this one. Oh, they're coming off a win, so Ogi Minami is probably very confident. <laughs> it's a good reminder, you lost about 70 games. That's right. All the things they worked on are starting to get better. And I love it when Takeda Sensei talks. Ooh, Grandpa Ukai is here. Oh, he's always got little volleyball kids following him. That's cute. Oh no, Yachi doesn't get to sit on the bench. That's unfortunate. I like how local community members are also excited about this tournament. Not just other high school kids. This is a little side note. Remember my comment earlier about how they might have hired a better animator for the playing episodes? Or hopefully from this point on, you'll see in Grandpa Ukai's face that there's a lot more line detail. And I'm not just talking about because of his wrinkles. If you look closely at his eyebrows, you'll see the striations of his eyebrow hairs. And the reason why most animators don't want to do this, because it simply takes like two to three times more work. Remember that when you're animating, you're drawing at least 24 drawings per second. So every extra line I draw is another line I have to draw 24 more times. So it does take more time, but it looks really great as you can see with Grandpa Ukai's face. That's right, take a breath before you serve. I have to point out another detail just to prove my point. You look at the area under Asahi's eyebrows, look at all this amazing line detail just to show a deeper sense of emotion in his eyebrows, even in his chin and his sideburns, and all the great striations of his hair. All those extra line details just make the animations feel more real and a lot sharper. So, good job, new animator. It's like a six step serving approach. That's a little bit unrealistic on that one. Usually it's three to four steps. Ooh, starting off with an ace. No touch ace. Sa. Oh, here we go. It's Tanaka time. We got a flat top. Tip. But Nishinoya is going to be there. Ooh, Daichi read that so easily. Mm -hmm. When you play better teams, weaker teams are just seem a lot slower. Oh my god, they are reading the team so easily. That's right, team captain. Team Captain Douchebag. This is great passing technique demonstrated by our favorite guy, Tanaka. Even if he can't get both feet behind the ball, 
at least try to get one step closer to the ball so you can position your body behind the ball. Because if you can position your body behind the ball, you can pass the ball forward. And a great way to finish a pass that is slightly to the side and in front is to bring that other knee toward the floor. And that helps you kind of finish and push the ball forward. So always make sure that you're bending your knee and that your knee is over your foot or slightly in front so that you have that falling forward position in, in difficult situations. It's interesting that these powerhouse teams were a lot nicer than a weaker team like Ogi Minami. That's a nice dive. Kageyama's got that serve down. 24-16. Not close at all, Ogi Minami. Hmm, that's right. Oh, even even he gets a backstory. Wow, 24 to 6. I don't know if I should call him Ushijima or Ushiwaka. You guys let me know. I like this captain from Ogiminami, even though the score is 24 to 6. He's still trying to rally his team and convince them that, hey, the game is not over. We still have a chance. That's such an important attitude to have. And even if you don't come back, the only chance you have to come back is to simply believe. It all goes back to believe. It's easy to say, never give up, but can you truly believe it in your head? He's got some funky bunny hair. Oh man, he's already given up. That's what he talked about, man. You just have to go for it. You can't think. You can't predetermine. Oh, but the bunny head. I love this guy already. And he went for it even though the ball was not possible. I love that bunny guy. Please tell me his name and I hope to see him again. He's even got some encouraging words after. He's a good leader. Oh man. This feels very Japanese, just kind of crying in, in your own private space. Not showing too much emotion. Oh, that was a quick transition, man. It's so, it's very difficult to block right and then run a quick play all the way to the left. That's right. The plot proclamation is becoming true. The new captain from Ogiminami, I don't even know his name. I don't even know if they mentioned his name, by the way. But he says something that's very perceptive. He said that he not that wasn't just talking tough, he actually meant it. And if you go back and look at Hinata's facial expression, the animator did a really good job of having Hinata just have a very honest and straightforward face versus, we're gonna beat you, it was, we're gonna beat you. Just very matter of fact, and that's how much belief Hinata had in himself. Now, a lot of people talk about how good they're gonna be or how good they wanna be. There's some people just talk as their only way of trying to get an advantage, and there's other people that talk because they're just stating facts, like Ushijima, or in this case, Hinata. And that's the difference between arrogance and confidence. Talking arrogantly is putting other people down as a way to make yourself feel better. Talking confidently is building yourself up regardless of what other people are doing. So it's important to know the difference between arrogance and confidence. 
Yeah, he's not intimidated by Ushijima. Ah, that's what a lot of coaches say when they're when they're down. Oh, we got Rabbit Head here. <laughs> that's right. You can't talk tough and then not back it up. Mm -hmm. You talk tough and then when people push back just a little bit, you crumble. Very typical of teams that depend on their talking game more than their playing game. <laughs> Yeah, why is he laughing? Mm -hmm, so true. Okay, his name is Tawada. Now he's trying to practice what Hinata's doing is proclaiming and building up his belief. Uh, and of course, his team is too cool for school to join him on that belief because the whole team culture is talk more than you walk. We got Asahi. Work. Oh, this is our first time someone tried to pass a serve in this little intermission. Let's see if Nishinoya tries to pass again. Ah, nope. Ah, but we got. Tanaka's t-shirt shake never gets old. Ooh, the differential, point differential is even bigger. Sturdy foundation. I'm curious what how he defines what's the foundation of a team. Oh, so he did visit. Oh, this is before Hinata was on the team. Hmm. Like they expected to lose just because they've lost so many games prior to that. So they needed some new belief, new energy in the program. Yeah, that's the Daichi, the Asahis, and the Sugas. Okay, that's what I mean by foundation. The key people that kept that belief alive. Mm. I like how Ogin Minami had stronger belief in the second one, but they're getting beat worse. Because Karasuno is just getting better. There's the Daichi lookalike. Ooh. I'm curious if Tawada learned his lesson. I don't think it's a coincidence that it's 24-13 right now. This is his chance to practice belief. Is he just going to give up and wait for the game to end? Or is he going to treat this as a new opportunity to fight back and try to earn his way back on the court? And if he's a team captain and if they want to get better throughout the later half of their season, it all starts with the captain and the leadership. He needs to set the example for belief and effort and attitude. Let's see. I think he's gonna go for it. <laughs> I know that feeling. When teams are already leaving because the score is too great.
Another small detail, but it's important to recognize this. The ball is actually spinning the incorrect way. When you toss and you're flicking it towards yourself, which is how most jump servers serve, the ball should be spinning forwards. And a lot of servers do that because you want free top spin when you're actually hitting the ball to help it drive downward more. But here, even though he's flicking it upward, it's actually spinning towards himself, so it's actually having backspin, which is not physically possible, but even if you could find a way to put backspin on the ball, it's actually going to make the ball sail out because that's going to drive the ball upward. So I'm surprised that they made an error on this specific animation. Okay, come on, Tawada. This is your chance to be better. Okay, he's already standing. That's not good. And he's thinking too much. I think he's going to do it. I guess he's not. Whoa. I thought he was going to... Oh. <laughs> I guess he is. Oh, I love it. I love it. Inspire your team. All it takes is one more person to try harder. I love it. Ooh, another hustle player. Yeah, this guy's ready. He crashed into the bleachers and came up ready for a spike. And now he has to suffer the wrath of a little shrimpy boy. I think that's the new quick set. Because he not to actually hit around the block. Asa! I would yell louder, but that would blast your ears in the mic. 2513. Can't wait to hear what the Ogiminami locker room sounds like. Is this single elimination? Do they have to go home? These are brutal Japanese tournaments. Oh, I love it. Aki, the captain, comes in with some encouraging words. I love that he still cares about his team. Comes back to support his old team. He looks like the younger brother of Daichi with rabbit hair. They keep referencing how they don't practice much. I hate to interrupt one of these motivational speeches from a character that I actually enjoy. You can give all the inspiring words and say all the right things, but if you don't practice, it doesn't matter. You have to put in the physical effort, which is actually practicing how to pass, hit, work hard, work as a team. Then you have to put in the emotional effort, which is learning how to control your emotions, know when to get fired up, know when to be steady, know when to have a positive attitude towards your teammate. And then you have to put in the right mental effort, which is the belief part. And even though belief is the most important one out of all these, you cannot just work on one of these aspects and expect to be better. So it just stood out to me that they've referenced multiple times that this is the team that doesn't practice very much. <laughs> Man, that guy should play on Karasuno. He would fit in great with that personality. Just another person to believe and push their team. Ooh, he called him captain still. Finally. Wada appreciates these words that he's been proclaiming for so many years. Must be the hair. Gosh, that's some, that's some bad hair though. <laughs> Are they watching uh, Shirtozawa practice? Two meters is a high school. That's, that's pretty big. Oh, and his hand is huge. 
<laughs> As is eating a banana like a monkey. Tanaka looks good with a banana. That was a strange comment by Shimizu. Someone explain that one to me. Is this some sexual reference that I don't understand? Ooh, who's this guy? Must be one of those top three players that they talked about earlier at the barbecue. It is single elimination. That's brutal. Alright, the two meter guy. He looks like he's as tall as Lev. <laughs> I'm surprised he's not this intimidated by that height. <laughs> 163 if you round up. <laughs> the difference is the height of a, of a character. Oh, this is funny. Everyone's trying to figure out analogies for the height difference with Hinata. <laughs> I want to combine with that shark. <laughs> I used to think that all the time. If I was only six foot three, six foot four, with my skill, I could be amazing. Grandpa Ukai's got some muscle on him. That's what I want to look like when I'm his age, still coaching and still buff, but still intimidating. That's interesting, I wonder if he not the, now that Grandpa Ukai said that boys haven't finished growing, I wonder if Hinata's gonna grow, I feel like that would take away from Hinata's character. Ooh, they're, they are playing them next. This will be exciting against the big, tall, two-meter man. Here's my immediate reaction to episode 12. I love the little side stories that Haikyuu includes that even someone as minor as Tawada from Ogi Minami had a little flashback moment and then even demonstrated some growth in this tournament. I'm starting to think that each character's hairstyle is reflective of their personalities. Tawada's hair is slicked back like he's trying to look super cool and that's very similar to his volleyball personality where he spends more time trying to act and talk cool than actually being a good player. I was surprised to see Hinata intimidated by the tall 2 meter player because he usually goes up to those players and tells them that he's going to beat them. So I wonder if this is going to be a new part of Hinata's personality where he starts to become a little bit more human in terms of his confidence. But something tells me that he's going to be a lot more confident when he's actually on the court and that's when his belief is going to kick on and he's going to try to beat that taller player. Hopefully the new quick set that Kageyama and Hinata have been working on will be effective against this 2 meter player because I really want Karasuno to do well enough and go very far in this tournament and not get eliminated early like the last tournament that they played in in Season 1. I was super excited to see Grandpa Ukai at this tournament which is one step closer to my prediction of where I think Grandpa Ukai is going to eventually be on the coaching staff of Karasuno. I think it was very perceptive that Grandpa Ukai recognized how the upperclassmen like Daichi, Suga, and Asahi were the ones that laid the foundation for this new and improved Karasuno team to thrive. And it didn't just happen magically this year. That makes a lot of sense because those three main players maintained a strong volleyball culture of training, working hard together, and being passionate about volleyball, even when they were losing. How you conduct yourself when you're losing is a much bigger indicator of your character than how you conduct yourself when you're winning. The author did such a great job of capturing those moments when a team starts talking trash right before a game, trying to intimidate the opponent. In my experience, the best players and teams that I've seen do more playing than talking because they don't feel the need to tell other players and teams that they're better. They just simply show it on the court. 
Also, you just look like an idiot if you make all this talk and you can't even back it up. So one lesson we can take away is spend more time focusing on getting better as a player than getting better at trying to intimidate your opponents. I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction video. We'll see you in the next one.